Hello. Aloha, aloha, oh, I keep silly forgetting bird. To say this. Aloha. aloha from the Garden Island. And welcome to the Book, <laughs> Book Doctor's, Doctor's YouTube channel. channel. We have a very special guest. We have Mark Kurlansky here yep. with us today. Not a Mark Kurlansky, the Mark Kurlansky. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> All that, Aloha. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, and I've been I've living under a big mound of salt for the last 50 years. Mark is not only one of the greatest nonfiction yeah. writers of our time, but also a fiction yes. author yes. as yes. well. Yes, yes. Of many fiction books. Yes. Well, five. That's five many. Could be a career, as hey, said, good, right, right there. Good. It's Harper right. Lee did one book, okay? Right. <laughs> so, you're six times greater than she is. Um, so, you know, lots of lots has changed in the publishing business yeah. over the years that you have been in it. Yeah. When did your first book come out, by the way? Mm. Mid nineties. Mid nineties. Mid -90s. So yeah. you know you've done a lot of books when you have to actually think about when your first one came <laughs> out. Yeah. And you. Thirty three, right? Books. I think it's thirty three. Yeah. yeah. So you've been published by the big five many right. times by independent publishers yes. uh, like Workman, by university presses. Um, yeah. I, I, I uh, started, well, I didn't start, but I, uh, I did uh, Todd and Salt and Bass, which are three of my best yes. books, with Walker when it was a family-owned company. Oh, wow. my. Wow. Okay. Which was wow. fun. Yeah. We would decide things by all getting together and sitting around the table. Yeah, that's see, the that's the <laughs> like the jacket design. Right. Yes, yeah, all absolutely. That. And for those of you who haven't had a book published nowadays, you don't even get to meet your designer. You don't get to talk to your designer. No, your which book is publisher. frustrating because I, I I do artwork for my books. Yeah. And, and, uh. and even when I give them artwork, I really don't have a conversation with them about how to use yes. it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, having been published by these different kinds of publishers, and based on even just the little bit that you just said, can you talk a little bit about the differences between the different kinds of publishing experiences? Well, you know, the Walker, the small family publisher, barely exists anymore. Yeah. Right. right. There, there are a few. Actually, I've been talking to uh, a guy up in Maine. It's just him and his wife okay. uh, published beautiful books. Uh huh. Um, there's not too much of that around, but no, it, it's it, it's great because it's you know it's the difference in dealing with a person and dealing with a corporation. Yeah. Right? yeah. And when you deal with big publishing, uh, your editor, if you're lucky, your editor will edit, but <laughs> not always. No, I've, I've had <laughs> several books by big publishers, and they didn't even look at the book. It seemed like right, but the the the, the, the main thing that the editor does is it your representation in the corporation. Yeah, right, right, right. Because right, right, right. it's a whole corporation to deal with. Yeah. So that's, that's a complete other thing. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And do you want to say a word about university presses and the peer review? Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> peer review! <laughs> I, I only had one experience with this, and this was a book I did with Yale University Press, and it's funny that this worked out badly because I've hated Yale all my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went to this prep school near New Haven whose colors were blue and white and you were supposed to dream of Yale, so they constantly had you going to Yale and doing yeah. the ice sing and concerts at Yale, yeah, right. and, you know, so I, I knew Yale and, you know, I told Thing when I applied to colleges was anything but, but Yale. Yale. <laughs> you know? So here I am many years later doing a book for Yale University Press. And it was because it was a, a series called Jewish Lives and where they asked different Jewish writers to write about biographies mm -hmm. of Jews. And I, I was doing something on Hank Greenberg. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so they have peer review. I, I, I get these anonymous uh, emails long email right? mm -hmm. from uh, Yale professors who don't want me to know their name, right. Uh, right. giving me complete wrong information yeah. about baseball. These were guys who <laughs> thought they really knew baseball and they knew nothing. They had it all wrong. It, 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 was, it was just a, a nightmare. And I finally said to my editor, 
I can get this book reviewed by somebody who really knows something. They say, okay, so I got Ira Burkow, who is one of, one of the great writers, not just of baseball, but of all of all writers. And knew Hank Greenberg person. Wow. <laughs> Okay. And he was kind enough to review it, and he made a number of good suggestions. Uh -huh. And then I said to the editor, well, that was great, right? And she said, well, that's not what we expect for a peer review. Uh -oh. uh, and she went back to some more know-nothing professors. Right, right. So this is a part of the process yes. that many people don't understand about university presses, yes. is that you have to go through a peer review And let me explain process. what a peer review is. It's a review by people who are supposed to be your peers, but as we've seen, are many times just academics who well, are, they are on the board. Right, they're academics in the subject matter of your book. Yes, uh, yeah, but I don't, think these, you, I don't think these people were professors of baseball. No, 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 I no think not. They were, I, think they said, I think they said, who's into baseball? Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, I am, I like the Mets, right. For sure. Right. So many of your books are deeply researched. Yes. Or at least I assume they are. <laughs> Based on, what, based on what I've read, unless you made yeah, it all I, up. Yeah, I mean, to be, honest, to, to, to be honest, I have an obsessive fear of being wrong or missing something. Me too. But, but everybody who's doing a nonfiction book, listen to that carefully. Yeah. An obsessive fear about getting it wrong. Yeah. Right. Because if you get it wrong, it's very bad. So what does that mean for your process, that obsessive fear? It means that I just dig and dig and dig in, you know, archives and libraries and, and interviewing people. And I, I just don't stop till I get to a point where I think, gee, I haven't heard anything new in about a month and a half. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and what's the general... But you still, you still, still. can have missed right, it. Right, sure. And what's the general arc for a project like COD or SALT? How many years in the making are those books? Um, just uh, my making? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, just a couple of years. Okay. And, and then, you know, it takes the publishing company you know, a whole sure. other year. Right, right, right. I don't right. know what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows what they're doing, but sometimes even longer than a year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you go out on the road and promote your books? I do. Yeah, you do. I do. Um, I find it extremely hard. Yeah, it's hard. You know, because... Uh, yeah, they put you on these morning television shows. Yeah. If it, you're lucky. Yes, if you're and, lucky. and so you got to be there yeah. at 7 o'clock yeah, in, in the morning. morning. So you got to get this flight at 4 in the morning. Yeah. Right. Right. And then you go all day with the interviews, and then you have an event at night, yes. and then you get up in the morning to go on to the next morning. Yeah. And these morning television shows are amazing, because you go there, and you meet these people. It's usually a man and a woman. Right. And they seem perfectly nice and perfectly intelligent. Yes. And you have an intelligent conversation about your book. Yes. And then they turn the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> and then they become idiots. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> okay. And then they're all peppy and turkey. And, <laughs> right. Uh, right, right. That's really funny. So I have one final question myself for you, which is how you, you write books that have incredible history in them, um, and as you say, tons of research. How, how do you go about creating the page turning and story part of your books? Well, you know, whenever I teach a workshop like I did all of this past yeah. week, um, I always begin by what my friend Isaac Bashiva Singer said to me. I used to know Singer, it was like a Jewish fake. You know, we lived in the same neighborhood in Miami Beach and the same neighborhood in New York. Wow, <laughs> that's funny. That's nice. That's funny. And that's funny. he taught a course at University of Miami. And one day uh -huh. I said, to him, Isaac, what do you teach? And he said, with that Yiddish inflection, he said, I teach what can't be taught. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. What you can't just asked taught. is yes. exactly yeah. what can't be taught. Uh -huh. I mean, it's about storytelling. And either you're a storyteller or you're not. And yeah. It's amazing. We've all known people yeah. um, who we avoid at parties who, you know, just can't tell, can't a, tell story. a story. <laughs> a good storyteller can tell a story about anything, anything and make yeah. it fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of, of uh, you know, discussion about whether writing can actually be taught. Uh, and I think some things you can teach people, 
Yeah, I mean, you. Know, I, I, I had a good week. I had very good students. Yeah, we did too. And, and, and I think what I was able to leave them with is an improved critic, critical judgment. Yes, critical uh -huh. judgment. You know, the kind of questions you should be asked. Yeah. Okay. Do you have one of those questions that you can leave our listeners with? Um, have you said anything in the first paragraph that's going to make anybody want to keep the book? Wow. <laughs> write that Perfect. down and put it over All your right. computer We're as done. you write it home. That's it. Drop the mic. Thank you. Thank you so much for Thank being here. My pleasure. Nice Thank talking you. All you. right. See you at, See the, at the bookstore. bookstore. <laughs> Thank you. That was great. That was great. Excellent. That's such a little pearl for somebody. It is.